Good afternoon. Thank you for tuning in and joining us as we continue to live broadcast our tribute to Leon Fleischer. We hope very much that staying with us helps you as much as it helped us to remember the great artist and to take a look forward towards carrying his legacy into the future together with generations of musicians to come. This tribute is made possible by an extraordinary solidarity effort of Mr. Fleischer's students who put their love and their work together to honor their noble teacher. They bring their musical offerings, they speak about their mentor, they help us all pay homage to this incredible man and to pledge our own dedication to carry his legacy of the human and artistic values which he taught and upheld himself. We appreciate your patience if the artists may experience challenges while connecting. We will do our best to bring the beauty of each presentation to you in its fullest. And today we have as our guest Sar Ahuvia. And uh, thank you for joining us today. It's a great pleasure to have you uh, connected from your New York apartment. Thank you How so you? much, Anna. It's, uh, it's a real pleasure and honor to be part of this. Thank you. And welcome. I understand that um, you're even prepared to play live for us, um, to keep the music alive throughout this broadcast. That's been extraordinary. Would you like to share some memories first? Uh, yes, I would. And, um, you know, there's so many and uh, it's, it's really hard to to say what was the, the thing that, that I took the most. But um, for me, uh, the three years I was with uh, Leon Fleischer um, were just wonderful. And um, I think of um, that time as, as some of the most precious time I ever spent with a teacher. Um, and uh, Mr. Fleischer himself always said, you know, once you leave the studio, you can take this or you can decide not to do that. Um, but while I was with him, it was truly wonderful. Um, he was a wonderful person. He was kind. He was funny. Um, he was a genius, obviously. Um, and uh, it, it's just, it, it's a golden time. I, I could not really put it any other way. Um, now, uh, he also has something uh, very important in terms of how my career continued after Peabody, uh, and that is um, that uh, he has something to do with the forming of the duo with my wife, Stephanie Ho, duo Stephanie and Saar. Uh, and, it, and it really had to do with um, uh, the first year when we were there and um, that he, um, we, uh, he had a Beethoven project for us and uh, part of it was learning the Beethoven quartets. And um, I had met uh, Stephanie at a, actually at a jazz class and uh, offered her to try reading some Beethoven quartets. And uh, well, I, I would say the rest is history, and, uh, but not quite because it still continues to this day. We, um, we uh, actually are releasing our next album, which is mostly uh, dedicated to the great Opus 130 quartet with uh, the um, Grosse Fuge in Beethoven's own transcription. So his idea of, of you know, reading the quartets in forehand uh, versions is living with us to this day. And um, we, uh, we are going to dedicate the album to him uh, as well as the, uh, the victims of the pandemic and um, we just feel so indebted to him for, for starting us on the journey. I'm gonna play a piece uh, that I worked with him the first year uh, as a student. Uh, this is the Forlan from uh, Ravel's Le Tombeau de Couperin. And um, Leon Fleischer is, is uh, renowned for his uh, grasp of the Germanic repertoire and I did my fair share of Brahms and Beethoven with him, but, but he was wonderful with everything. Um, and I just remember our lessons on um, Le Tombeau so fondly, and so um, I'd like to dedicate this piece to him. Thank you. 
Thank you very much for such a beautiful and um, soothing um, tribute and gorgeous playing. That piano sounds really, really beautiful. Thank you. And thank you for joining. <clears throat> and this, I find this really um, very meaningful that you decided to de dedicate your new album, which is about to come out, to Leon Fleischer and to the victims of the pandemic. And um, that both of those are significant, of course, and um, uh, that they are signifying your in output into the future of the music. This is, um, right. to me, the way we musicians carry out the legacy. You have some comments about how you decided to do that? Um, yeah, and you know, it, it was a, um, a difficult decision to, to put out an album out into the pandemic because one really doesn't know where, where it will reach and how and who. Um, but it really just became about um, keeping music alive. And um, we were uh, in the process of uh, finishing the editing and the mastering uh, when we heard uh, the news of, of Mr. Fleischer's passing. And you know, knowing that, that he, he was the one that started all of this and actually to this day, he was actually the only one that ever coached us on these quartets. Um, it just felt right to to have this be uh, part of the way of continuing his his legacy. Um, and um, you know, n nothing will replace him. We all, I think, have a big gaping hole in our hearts. Um, but um, as I told someone, I feel like the three years I spent with him. Um, can fill an entire lifetime of, of love for music. If I can just keep drawing on what he showed us and what he taught us, then, then we have enough to, to keep going with music uh, for the rest of our lives. And um, for that, I'm, I'm really just so uh, indebted to him for, for how giving he was. He just, um, he just gave it all, and that's how we should too. That's, that's a wonderful call for action, I would say. And I experienced it firsthand when um, so many students of Leon Fleischer joined the um, uh, messenger group and uh, started interacting with each other, inviting more and more people. And <clears throat> that was um, really powerful to uh, be in the midst of so much love and energy, uh, which put people from around the world put into um, presenting these uh, tributes and just simply sharing memories and exchanging um, just moments of um, remembrance with each other. That, that's uh, an unforgettable, very enriching experience for me to Thank be you. part of it. And um, today we'll have one more presenter with us. Um, thank you very much, Saur. If you would please stay with us at the end of um, Ericsson's presentation, I would like to invite you again uh, on stage just to say maybe a couple of words for our listeners. Sure, and, absolutely. And um, now we'll be moving on to our next presenter. Uh, let's welcome into the studio Ericsson Rojas. I hope I'm saying your last name correctly. You have to, you have to roll your R's, Anna. Rojas. Rojas. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I will keep learning. And um, it's, it's such a great pleasure to have you join um, the tribute. Um, thank you so much for finding time. And uh, you're, you're uh, logging in from Florida, right? That's right, from uh, West Palm Beach here. And uh, I wanted to thank you for the opportunity uh, for much needed, needed therapy. I feel like I'm coming out of hibernation of sorts. And uh, what a way to kind of uh, come out of uh, hibernating in the summer. It's been just so wonderful to see everybody, all of you out there, all my classmates and colleagues, dear friends. I wanted to uh, first express my condolences to the biological family of, of Fleischer, as well as his musical family, uh, also particularly his dear wife, uh, Kathy Jacobson Fleischer. My heartfelt uh, condolences. Um, also wanted to give a shout out to all those uh, peers and musical siblings of mine, uh, those of, of us that studied together, including many of you who have presented here as well. It's been really uh, just wonderful watching you again, hearing you play again, and just remembering 
the awesome times that we share together. I think of Yonga and uh, the friendship that we continue to have. Uh, others that presented that went to, we went to school together and, and studied with Fletcher at the same time. Ben Kim, what's up? Lure Johnson, Aina, it was great to see her. Sonia, Michael Shepard, it's been great. Even Professor Brian Gans, it's great. You know, you all look so good and you look the same. Me, not so much. So you're like, who's that baldy on, on the camera? It's, it's your good old friend, uh, Erickson. Um, <laughs> Uh, so that's that. Um, there are, of course, the other classmates and colleagues uh, that have not presented, but I remember them very fondly. Aimo and uh, Aimo Pajan and Regina Shenderovic, Wei Yin, Adam Golka, Yuri Shadrin. Uh, uh, just shout out to the whole Peabody faculty, uh, especially Young Hee Moon. And uh, even those uh, other sons, musical sons of Fleischer that scatter all over, I think of Bill John. Um, at Holden College and uh, Peter Takash, who have not had the pleasure of meeting, but was so delighted and ministered by his words. And, and um, there was a student that is going to be starting to study with him now that I, we had the pleasure of working with this past summer. Uh, of course, Jonathan Biss at, at Curtis and uh, Enrique Graf. Now, I have a, sto a funny story about Enrique. Enrique, I don't know if you're listening or if you will listen later, but a funny thing happened to me that only made sense after I saw your broadcast. You've heard these crazy stories of uh, lovers that, in the heat of the moment, may call out the name of the other lover to their current lover. Well, that kind of happened to me, but with Enrique, uh, who I've never met before. And Fleischer says to me, well, Enrique. And I was like, who's Enrique? <laughs> so uh, that was very funny. And... Uh, uh, he was puzzled why Enrique would come up in his mind too. Maybe it's because we're both Latinos, I don't know. But I never knew why Enrique, but I think now I know why. <clears throat> uh, by the way, uh, so uh, let's see. Yeah, it, just in general, I echo and resonate with everything that every, all of you have said. Uh, uh, you know, we symbiotically vibrate with everything that Fleischer, the way that, that he touched our lives deeply. Um. And uh, I'll share now the story of how I came to meet and know Fleischer. Um, I'll never forget it. He's always had a, a very unique stance in my life, even before I knew who he was at all. Um, I was in my Curtis audition. I was 15. And there you had at the table Eleanor Sokolov, Gary Grafman, uh, Simmer Lipkin, Claude Frank, um, and not at the table, but in the back, standing up right by the camera where they were filming the auditions. This was second round. He was not there for round one of the auditions. And, uh, but I, you know, he was there for, for round two, standing out and up in the back. And I remember very, very dearly because I, I, I said to myself, I think this is that Fleischer guy they're talking about. I'm not sure. Um, I, I was very, very naive and, and ignorant of many things. Um, so the day before, I had played the first movement of the Tempest Sonata, Beethoven. And uh, was able to do, you know, okay. Wasn't that happy about my first round. So they say, um, they, they turned to Fleischer and asked him, would you like to hear the first movement again? They, they, they played it, he played it yesterday. Uh, or maybe the second movement. Uh, what would you like? And I remember with my fingers crossed, just say, thinking to myself, please say the second movement, please say the second movement, please say the second movement. Uh, because I did not want to deal with fast notes. Uh, I still don't. But anyway, and uh, he, uh, he, he indeed said, he took a moment to think, and as he always does, and says, we'll hear some of the second movement. But that said something to me that has stayed with me all this time. And the way I took that at that time as a young uh, uh, aspiring student was, uh, you know, where is real music making? Where does it lie? So the fact that he wanted to hear the kind of music making that can happen when you're dealing in these broad, uh, time has slowed, uh, 
uh, you mentioned, uh, that said a lot to me, and I and I I felt it ever since. Um, thereafter, I, I finally got my private audition with him at Peabody, um, and I remember waiting for him outside uh, four thirteen in the hall, and he's kind of delaying, and I'm kind of nervous, and he finally makes his way around that corner, and then you have to watch him walk slowly all the way down the hall. Um, and I, I don't know where to look. So, but finally he puts his gaze on me and, and, uh, and smiles. Uh, and we go inside. Uh, the aura was just amazing. Actually, before I get to that, I, I, I have to say that it was, I was influenced by the legendary status that he had at Curtis. Um, we would hear, you know, he, he wasn't there very often, maybe twice a year, uh, even, you know, even his students there, I think, would travel to Baltimore often. Um, and um, I, I just remember rumors just uh, going all over the school. Fleischer's coming, Fleischer's coming, Fleischer's coming uh, for our piano mat seminars. And uh, so I, I, I couldn't wait to hear him teach. I, I, I just couldn't. And then um, I remember very fondly a master class. He, uh, of course, they weren't going to choose me to play for him. Uh, and so Lang Lang and Jonathan Biss, I think, uh, played for him. I remember Lang Lang worked in the first Beethoven sonata with him. That was wonderful. And then uh, Jonathan Biss, uh, G, I think it was G minor Mendelssohn concerto. Um, but back to this now, when I, when I finally make my way, it's just one-on-one -on -one and we're there in that beautiful nest that is the, the top of that corner in the building, uh, 413 and... and um, we didn't talk much at first. I, I, we, you know, after after preliminary greetings, I went into playing. I was very nervous, and I knew I had no shot uh, unless I just sort of gave myself over to the art. So I remember not worrying about getting through the piece or anything. I really, uh, in a sense, had everything to lose and nothing to lose at the same time. So I just cut, sort of closed my eyes. And uh, by the time I opened them again, I had played the entire uh, Prelude and Fugue in C sharp minor Bach from book one. Not very long, I mean, it's a, you know, not a long piece, but again, another interesting phenomenon. Fletcher is so unique uh, and nothing with him is like what you tend to get from others. What happened after I played that Bach? was we spoke for 45 minutes to an hour. That says a lot as well about him, what he's after. So we, we spoke, after we spoke, uh, he said, okay, let's go back to the piano and play some more stuff, some different styles. So we did that. And then uh, I was privileged to be uh, accepted and be a part of that. Uh, uh, studio for five years at uh, Peabody, uh, changed my life, still does, just like all my peers. Uh, and uh, I'd like to uh, share, share some memories of, of most memorable experience uh, in his studio there with my colleagues. First of all, you have to understand, when you go into that room, it's kind of like this one, but it, this one is not by design, I just haven't gotten around to uh, ornamenting it. But it was a very plain room. It had nothing other than the fullness of his aura, which glowed directly, flowed directly from the glory of the music, if you want to call it that. that that's at least what I was seeing. You could, you could sense it in the air. Um, it, was, it was both terrifying, but also very welcoming because it's a place where you get scanned in a sense, uh, and only that which matters most matters in that room. So again, it's terrifying, but then at the same time, all superficial things kind of disappear. Um, right now, I'm, I'm kind of nervous. I've never done this Facebook Live or, or talk, and, and you know all these superficial things, the camera, the mic, and it, I almost wish he was here uh, so that, so that it would, all that would just disappear, and it was just uh, the music. There were no diplomas on the wall. There were no degrees on the wall. Uh, nothing wrong with that, but he didn't have them, that's all. And um, all that mattered to him was the music. Actually, then later on in 2007, when they did, or six, 
one of those when they did the documentary, the Two Hands documentary. Then Mrs. Jacobs and Fleischer came in and <laughs> put up all kinds of uh, flyers and, and things that I think are there to this day. But uh, it was not his doing, which is uh, telling, I think. Um, um, again, the only thing that mattered was us as vessels, channels uh, to the music. He often talked, especially with me, to not to get so caught up in the music uh, and be in it, but uh, you know the balance between that and the the the, the storyteller that still keeps his distance, uh, and uh, it's still uh, terribly difficult for me today. Um, and um, another thing that I loved that I don't think has been mentioned is when he was sitting that wonderful old green throne, just a chair, a grandfather chair type thing. Um, and we would play. Often you would hear this humming, this uh, gut, this uh, deep groaning, for like, a, like a humming, like a singing at times in your music making. And when I would sense that, when I would hear that, it would be so wonderful to know that even though I'm struggling through notes and the physicality of the human experience, uh, he's right there with me. He's right there with me in the deepest, most uh, inner song of the of the of the artistic expression. Unlike anything else I've ever experienced, the way that he did it. Um, then he would come, sit by your side with his left hand, and what would happen at that point is you would take flight. I often felt I was soaring, and even though half the time I didn't know my pieces fully, and and all of that, I still feel like I played at my best when he was next to me. I'm sure many of you felt, felt that way. And after he took you like an eagle and, and you were flying the highest heights, after the lesson was over and, and he, was, he would be gone for two weeks and, until we had our next marathon, and, and uh, it would just be all from there, just a landing experience, just going back to earth. Uh, sometimes it would last a, a number of days or uh, he would give us so much, enough to keep us to the next time that he would return. Um, the, the idea of him being humble or, or, or having humility uh, has come up. It's true. And the way in which it's true with him is interesting. Uh, he wouldn't always respond in the way you would expect him to. You know, sometimes he would look at the same score that I'm looking at, and he would just instantly see all these shapes, all these structures, all these relationships. And quite frankly, I got frustrated because why can't I see that? We're looking at the same thing. And how is it that you see it instantly and I can't see it? So I asked him, I asked, I shared with him my frustration. And maybe he could have answered, well, you know, why would you be comparing yourself to me? If that's true, you know, uh, what makes you think that you can see what I can see? Um, he could have said that. He, he could have said, oh, that's because I have the answer. Look, it's this, this, and this. If you do this trick, A plus B equals C, if you do that. But it wasn't like that. He said to me, put your hands on my shoulder, said, have patience. Have patience. I too had similar vision at your age. Have patience. And to this day, that vision continues, uh, as I'm sure my colleague can relate, uh, to, uh, uh, to focus, I guess, or, or improve. Um, just another great ways in which he was a, a most encouraging teacher, especially in the moments of not so glorious moments. Uh, uh, I remember, you know, um, there's that common feeling of defeat that we have after we've tried, after we have attempted to handle great art. And, you know, you kind of sigh and uh, it's never good enough kind of a thing. And especially you want to do better for Fleischer. And he wouldn't yell at you about it. He would, he would understand the high calling and he would be very sympathetic and encouraging about it, understanding about it. Um, and he would often say after you finish playing, even if it was not the great, but you gave everything you had, he would say, thank you. And you could feel that he received what you had to give. Uh, and now it's about to be reciprocated. I remember one time, you know, realizing my, my great need of, of improvement and practice, he said, I wish I had the time, I wish I had the energy, the age, to sit with you hours on end and just and work that way and practice. 
that's not some that's not something that should be coming out of Fleischer's mouth. You would think, uh, you know, some, a man of uh, an artist of his stature. I remember this one time I showed up, I'm unpre particularly unprepared to the lesson, and um, I was just head down before I was playing. I was about to start playing, and he said, "You okay?" And I expressed to him, you know, this, this only happened once. Uh, I, I I just I'm not I don't feel prepared today at all and 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 instead of yelling at me or anything like that uh or or belittling me or diminishing anything he uh was understanding and you know inquired deeper about what was going on and uh in a in a you know in a wonderful way and then and then i remember him saying you don't have to play today you know we got up and at the end of that lesson uh the group lesson you know he puts again his hand on, on me on my shoulder and he says you know he gave, he gave me some kind of encouraging uh pat on, on the back you know like, like get back on the horse, you know, you can, you, we can do this, you know. Um, so it was, it was incredibly uh, invigorating and encouraging. So in that sense, and many other ways, he was most accessible, most intimate when it came to music making. In other ways, he was not. In other ways, he was uh, not that personable in, or, or uh, not that intimate as far as personal uh, life uh, matters. Uh, I remember, uh, you know, one time wanting to sit at lunch with him and he, and he said, no, let me have this time to, to recruit myself. We, we're gonna spend six hours in the studio straight, you know, let me, so, so there, you know, and, and remember in all the five years we had one studio party at his house, one. That's, that's, that's pretty good, but I mean, it, it was, music was with the moment that we uh, came very closely. Um, important things that, that he talked about that I, I, I'm sure has been shared, um, the idea of technique, uh, he, he, he received a lot of criticism for technique, you know, the long fingers, the, the moving into the keyboard, up, forward, uh, all of these things. Um, but, all, but, but, but for all the haters out there, I'm going to say, uh, Pleasure did say to us, for a thousand sounds, you must have a thousand different types of fingers. So there's a finger type for whatever sound that you can imagine. So he was really... Uh, it was unfortunate that they, that they thought that he uh, thought there was like one way to play the piano or something. Um, rhythm and timing, tone, color, depth, those were a must. The memory and tempo, they were not as essential, at least in lessons. Um, but absolute musical commitment and the ability to realize specific goals and purposeful playing that he demanded on the spot that was indispensable, that was a must. That was, you could come under tempo, you could come not memorized, the whole piece maybe is not completed. You, you better be able to accomplish musically on the spot what he's asking of you, uh, or at least show that you're, you're on your way. Uh, so, um, yeah, his, his wisdom, all this speaks to his wisdom. Which reminds me of like the wisdom of King Solomon or something like that. We, we hear the story in the Bible, the Queen of Sheba would come and many would come, many foreigners would come to, uh, you know, uh, the palace or where and, and to, to feed on the wisdom of, of King Solomon. And this is kind of how I felt with Fleischer. I brought, I brought about half a dozen or more friends uh, and, and musician friends uh, from Philadelphia down to, to, uh, to visit our lessons. Um, when I didn't have something solo prepared, I would bring my, my chamber music friends and we would do chamber music in the lesson. It was music, so he was happy to hear everything. Uh, so that's, that's that. Um, I want to share, uh, as I wrap it up, a quote, and thanks for indulging all, the, all these memories. Uh, the quote that was submitted by Curtis uh, from Jonathan Biss, which I feel uh, exactly this way. It says, His integrity was awe-inspiring as his intensity. His sound was inimitable, a force of nature. His instinct for timing was so ineffably right that to experience it was to have your soul realigned. It's exactly how I feel about Fleischer. Fleischer is one of these musicians, artists, pianists, that when you hear him play, 
you find yourself going beyond, is this beautiful? Do, do I like this? Uh, is this uh, aesthetically pleasing? You go beyond all that and, and you at least I, I get a sense of the virtuous, the true, uh, that which is inevitable, like laws of physics, all of this has been mentioned. The true, the good. I'm a Christian myself, uh, and I don't think Fleischer was known to be particularly religious, though he did speak of heaven and other ideas related, redemption. But I know that for my life, I'm much closer to God, even daily, through Fleischer and because of him. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's left a lasting impact on me, on my students. Uh, many that we, we try to pass this on to. Again, I'm very thankful for this opportunity to, uh, to share. I, I want to say it was very opportune after a decade of not seeing him. Last year, we were able to reconnect. Just last year. He came to West Palm Beach twice in a month. And I was able to take some of my students here, some of our university piano majors, and uh, heard him do a solo recital and an uh, interview after the concert. As well as two weeks later, the performance at the Kravis Center with the Palm Beach Symphony Orchestra. And uh, I went to see him backstage and he, we were delighted to see each other. I, I was so happy. And he was, he was happy that I was still, you know, alive or around or, or teaching. He says, also, oh, so you kept practicing. Uh, and then um, he said, he said uh, you know, I'll be, I'll be in the crevice. And I said, yeah, I'm, I'm coming to see you in the crevice too. He said, oh, I, I better get practicing. I think there's a, a hidden lesson there, probably unintentionally. He's full of hidden lessons. Cool. Uh, why is a man in what was essentially his last year of life, un un unknowingly, still talking about practice? It's a lifestyle. And he was also aware that it's difficult this calling, this, this lifestyle. And uh, I suppose it wasn't that easy for him either. I say this by way of encouragement, extending the encouragement. His Fleischer is 91 at the time and thinking about his need of practice. So it's uh, very encouraging. Um, and I think that's, that's all that I have to say. Um, I was, I'm, I'm still debating, right now I'm debating what to play. Uh, I know I wanted to play the Arietta, not the, the Arietta to the Opus 111. Um, perhaps I can try the whole uh, second movement. I'm not ready, but that's not new. And maybe my peers, if anybody's watching out there, they'll get a, a crack of, of what it used to be back in the studio. Uh, I'll have my music with the Schnabel edition. I'll invite one of Fleischer's uh, musical grandchildren, Jonathan Guan, who's uh, now going to be studying with me here to uh, turn pages for me. I'll, I'll wear my mask. That'll be interesting, I think. I think this is where I'm going, on. I'm just going with it. Uh, just like Flash with Todd, everyone. Go with it. Go for it. Yeah. Be courageous. Be dedicated. Yeah, this movement, this of is course, wonderful. by the way, this Opus 111 was one of the very last pieces that I worked on with him, the very last week that, that I ever was with him as a student. Um, I think it's a, it's very appropriate. It's prayer-like. It's a vision and a hope of peace. Uh, but from our human perspective, it's, uh, you know, there's a middle section uh, in the theme that is sad. Uh, it, it alludes to the human condition. Uh, the fact that there's death, there is sickness. Disease, there's uh, evil, corruption. 
so I, I like to uh, just, uh, as it were, read you this story of redemption. This is the good part, of course, the first movement is, uh, speaks more to the earthly turmoils, but um, yeah, I don't know what I can do or not do, but I guess I'll try it. I'll, I'll, I'll read it to you off the page, like I used, try to do it like I used to do for him, I suppose. Um, and I hope it ministers to you somehow. It's been a blessing. Thank you very much, Anna. Thank you very much for those wonderful memories and very much looking forward to the performance. Thank you both of you.
Thank you. Thank you so much. This was an incredible offering. And um, I know we worked really hard on making the sound work with the iPad. And um, I think I'm blessed it worked. Um, it was beautiful and colorful and um, we could hear your wonderful artistry. And um, I want to especially thank you for wonderful stories and um, great encouragement for, for me and um, for everyone who was watching. And um, I would like to bring back Sar. Um, these are our two guests of today. And I, I'm truly honored for our uh, program to have you, to have you come and um, offer such a sincere, such open uh, sharing of your art and your heart and your love for music and your experiences with Leon Fleischer. Thanks so much for having us. Sorry, good to meet you. Good to see you. Nice to meet you, Erickson. Gorgeous playing. Thank you. And um, I remember working with him on that piece too. And like you said, it's just the, the, the way he transports you. It's, it's unforgettable. Yeah. It is, it is that music, but it's uh, better than can be played. Yeah. Precisely. <laughs> Well, as a person who was watching both of you perform, you guys transported us today. I can attest, for, for myself at least, I can speak. And th this was uh, an incredibly enriching experience to meet you. And um, I'm very grateful that you found time and that you offered your energy and your talent and your wisdom and your insight and your memories. This is just wonderful to have you. Um, very enriching for me and for people who are watching and for people who will be watching, this is going to stay on. Anyone can access and um, anyone who wants to um, see the previous tributes, um, please visit um, Tribute to Leon Fleischer page on Facebook. Every one of our tributes are posted there. The videos are available and we may be doing more programs in the future. So please stay tuned and visit this page um, and make friends with um, wonderful Leon Fleischer students. And um, with this, we're going to say goodbye to our wonderful guests. Uh, um, thank you. Thank you very much, Enrico. Yes. We, we cannot thank you enough for doing this incredible project and you know bringing the, the Fleischer family together like this. So um, really, really special. I'm glad we were able to be together. And uh, thank you again. Um, and we'll say goodbye to Ericsson. Bye. And we'll say goodbye to Sar. Thank you. Hope to meet thank and see you. both of you again. Uh, maybe, um, hopefully soon in person. But until then, um, we hope to meet again in a virtual setting. And <clears throat> with this, um, we're going to say goodbye to our viewers as well. And um, let's um, listen to what Maestro Fleischer was speaking when he was playing his own music. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.